Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. Till this point we have talked about loops, right? We have talked about for loop and while loop. In this video we'll talk about three keywords, break, continue and pass. Again, why do we need that? Let's say in the code itself. So let's design a vending machine. Of course, not a physical machine here. Let's write a simple code just to mimic vending machine here. So what we'll do is if a user says, hey, I want five candies, you have to give five candies, not a physical candies, but then we'll, we'll write only candies. So print candies. Okay. So if I say one candy, it's one time. So if, if, if a user says, hey, I want five candies, you will print candies five times. So that's what we want to do. So let's try it here. So first of all, we need a variable and we'll say x and the value for this variable will be coming from user input. So we'll say int input and in this bracket, you will mention how many candies you want. Okay, once you got this statement, I, what I want to do is I want to print candies, right? So if a user says, hey, I want five candies, you will print candy five times. If you want to do something multiple times, you will simply use a loop. So we'll use a while loop here. Again, you can use for loop, that's your choice, okay? But I love for while loop here. So I will take a variable which is increment variable. I will say i is equal to one. And then we'll use a while loop here. And we'll say if i less than equal to x, because depend upon the number of value a user is entering, will print, will go for so many candies. And every time this loop runs, you will print candy. That's what we want to do here right and then after every statement we need to also increment it in fact we can so if you can write i equal to i plus one or you can use a shortcut here which is i plus equal to one because we have seen that right so instead of saying i equal to i plus one we can also use i plus equal to one shortcut for the same thing now this should work right so this should work let's try so if on this code you can see it is asking for the number of candies i would say four candies enter you, you got candy four times that means you're getting candies from the machine and I will just run this code once again. I will, this time I will go for, let's say eight and you can see we got candy eight times, which so is working. Now here is a twist. The twist is what if a user says, Hey, I want hundred candies. Okay. And then in your machine, in the vending machine, we don't have hundred candies. You have, let's say 50 candies or maybe 80 candies. So what you will do now, you have two choices. You can stop the transaction. You can say, Hey user, we don't have so many candies or what you can do is you can give 80 candies and you can say, Hey, we are, we are out of stock right can you do it here so i want to do that here so the available candies i would say i'll use a variable called as av which is available candies and let's say in my machine i have only 10 candies okay uh, if a user says five candies no issue you can take five candies example if i run this code now and if a user says hey i want 10 candies that's completely fine we have 10 candies but if a user says hey i want of uh, 20 candies we don't have that much right so what you will do here so in that case before printing candies what we can do is so here we can check if the number of, if the value of i, because see, if, if you have 10 candies and if a user says we want 20 candies, what you can do is you can give 10 candies, right? So the value of i is important here. So if the value of i is greater than your number of available candies, which is av, in that case, you will stop the execution or oh, we forgot one colon there. So we need to stop the execution. But which execution? Not the entire code execution, because maybe at the end of your code, outside your while loop, I want to print by so i don't want to stop the execution because you can do that by saying exit or something i don't want to end the execution of the code i just want to come out of while loop and the way you can do that is by using a statement called as break the moment you say break it means hey just just jump out of the loop right so let me just run this code and you can see it is saying how many candies you want i would say i want uh, five candies no issue you got five candies and you got by as well it should be get lost, right? Okay, so if I say 11 candies now, and you can see we got how many candies here. So we got one. In fact, let me just reduce the number because it is difficult to count. We don't have much time. So I would say I want six candies and see how many candies you got. You got one, two, three, four, five. So total number of candies available is five, but then a user says I want six candies. What you will get is only six candies, right? So this thing is important. So this is how you can stop, you can just jump out of the loop. So there are so many applications of this break statement, you can use it in your, in your applications, but then this is how it works. So if you want to just jump out of the block, you can simply use break. In fact, if you wanted to print a message by saying, hey, we are out of stock, you can do that here. So you can say print out of stock. And now if you run this code, let's say I want, I want eight candies. You can see after printing five candies, it's saying out of stock. You know, this is what happens when you buy something, buy a new phone online. You know, we have this open sale. Uh, so some people can buy it and then it says out of stock. Anyway, uh, so this is how your break statement works. The next statement we have is continue. 
So the question is, so in the last video, I have given you the assignment, which is you need to print numbers from 1 to 100 or 1 to 20, but then don't print the values which are divisible by 3 or 5. Okay, so you have to skip those values. So basically what I want is I want to print 1, 2, 3. I want to print 1, 2. I don't want to print 3. Then I, because it's divisible, divisible by 3. I want to print 4. I don't want to print 5 because it's divisible by 5. I don't want to print 6 because it is divisible by 3. I want to print 7, 8. Then I will not print 9 because it is divisible by 3. Okay, so I want to skip those numbers. How can we do that here? Of course, we'll, we'll shorten the code. We'll not be focusing on 5, only focus on 3, okay? So I want to print all the values from 1 to 100, but then I don't want to, I want to skip those values which are divisible by 3. And to do that, what I will do is I will write a code, and this time we'll go for for loop, okay? We can go for while loop or for loop, your choice. I will say for i in, and then we'll use a range here, and I will, re, I will go till 101 one because that's what I want to go for. I don't want to print zero, so let's, let me start with one, okay? So that's my for loop, and then I just want to print the value of i. Now what will happen, it will print all the values. It will print the values from one to 100. Let's check it out, so let's say run, and you can see we got all the values. But I don't want to print all the values, right? I want to, I don't want to print the value which is divisible by three. In that case, what I will do is I will say if, if my i value, which is i mod three is equal to equal to zero. Okay, let's not use on brackets there. If this is equal to zero, in that case, I do, I just want to skip the remaining statements. Okay, when I say remaining statement, I don't want to skip the statement outside the loop. Example, if I say at the end, you know, it's a good idea to print by at the end because at least you will know what is happening. So what will happen now is when you say for i in range 1 to 100, every time you say if it is 3, in that case, I don't want to print i. I just want it to continue with the loop. Let me just run this code for you. Oh, we got an error. What's wrong? Oh, we are missing one thing, right? Now, how will you, how will you continue? So you have to say a statement which is continue. So continue will skip the, the remaining stuff. So if I run this code, and you can see, we, we got all the values, and look at the output now. We got one, two, we are, there's no three because it is divisible by three. We don't have six again, we don't have nine, we don't have 12. So this is how you work with continue. So what continue will do, it will skip the further execution if you say continue. It will not jump out of the loop, it will only skip the remaining statements. In fact, in the assignment, what we have done is, so in the assignment question, it was three or five, right? So we can do, we can say or, I mean, we have to use a or symbol here, so we have to say or, i mod five is equal to equal to zero, right? So now it will skip all the values which are divisible by three or five. So you can see we don't have three, we don't have five, we don't have nine, we don't have 10, right? So this is how it works. In fact, we can also do it for and. So only skip those values which are divisible by three and five. Example, uh, 15, right? So we have 30, so all these values. So if I run this code once again, and you can see it will skip only those values which are divisible by both. In this case, it is 15. You can see we don't have 15. So that's how you can practice, you know? So we have continue here it works right so the next one we have is pass now when you will use pass so just imagine we want to print 1 to 100 okay so I want to print all the values but then I don't want to print those values which are let's say odd numbers okay again we are going for a very simple example I don't want to print values which are odd numbers so my condition here is don't print odd numbers see I'm not thinking about even I'm thinking only on odd numbers so my logic here is on odd how do I check odd? So I will say, I want print the value of i, but it should not be an odd number. So in that case, my condition is only on odd. So I want to do, so I want to print in else condition. So I will, I will say in else you have to print this. So if i mod 2 is not equal to 0, then don't do it. But only if it is in, in the else condition, I want to print it. But that's what I'm trying to do here. Now I know you you will be saying why why don't why what if you simply use even if you check for even and print it but imagine if you have a scenario where you are checking for the odd values you're not focusing on even you're focusing on odd in that case I want to print it in else part but then you can see it will not work you can see it is giving you an error you cannot simply put an if as an empty block right so in that case you will say hey I don't have anything here I'm, I'm typing pass so pass simply means hey there's no code ignore it right so just pass the if block in fact in other languages like c c plus plus we have curly brackets so we can fill, fill it up but in, unfortunately we don't use curly brackets here so we have to use pass so if i run this code you can see we got all the values all even numbers oh if we got all the values which are not odd okay so just rephrasing the point so that's how we use break 
continue and pass. So in the next video, we'll talk about some more patterns. Since we have talked about this thing now, this, so the next video will be very exciting where we'll talk about different patterns. So I hope you're enjoying the series. Let me know in the comment section. And if you have any questions, let me know that as well. So thank you so much everyone. Bye-bye.